Tyson Fury says, I quote, A lot of people don't know this, but I had to lose 110 pounds going into the Klitschko fight. 110 pounds. I felt weak. I didn't feel great. I wasn't having a great night. We didn't see a vintage Tyson Fury, but it was still good enough to beat a legend of boxing. This time, I'm already on weight. I'm 258 pounds as I sit here. I'm going to box at 255 or something like that. So I'm going to, <clears throat> so I'm going into training camp on weight. This is not a weight loss mission. I'm already down. Goes on to say, I've already been training since January for the build up of this fight. And where else is he talking here? Yeah, well, it doesn't put it. Okay. Yeah, Wilder is going to get the best Tyson Fury ever. I don't have to go in and lose all that energy and lose all that weight. It's already gone. And I've maintained at this weight for seven or eight months. So I'm going to be working on strength and I'm going to be working on game plans. I'm not going to overtrain and leave it all in Big Bear. This is the mistake fighters make at this level. They think if you train harder, you're going to fight harder. But you can only be so fit in a boxing fight. It's not about who's the fittest or who punches the hardest or who's the strongest. Because Mr. Olympia would be heavyweight champion of the world. It's about boxing skill. That's why we call it boxing. And that's what he's going to see. A whole lot of skill in there on the night. This is very, very interesting stuff from Tyson Fury. Now he says he's already down to fighting weight. And he says going into the Klitschko fight, he was 110 pounds overweight. Well, I dispute that. He was maybe 110 pounds overweight a couple of fights before the Klitschko fight, but he wasn't 110 pounds overweight directly before the Klitschko fight. That's BS. All right. So I definitely dispute that because I remember the shape he was in against Derek Chisora. All right. So what is he saying that he put loads of weight on after the Chisora fight? Oh, sorry, the Hammer fight, wasn't it? it? was the fight before Klitschko. Is he saying he put loads of weight on after the Hammer fight? Either the Hammer fight or the Chisora fight. Somebody will correct me if I'm wrong. Let's say it was the Hammer fight. Did he put loads of weight on after that? And then have to come down to fight Klitschko? I mean, maybe he did. Maybe I'm wrong saying it was BS, but I suspect it's BS. Because, you know, with Tyson Fury, <laughs> he mixes truth and lies all the time. But what's interesting to me about what Tyson Fury said here is that he's not on a weight loss mission right now because he's talking about today as well. He's not on a weight loss mission. He's already at fighting weight. And now he can concentrate on tactics, technique, so on and so forth. And he said, this is a big mistake that fighters make is they think if they train harder, they're going to fight better or fight harder. And basically what he's talking about here is, well, partially what he's talking about is overtraining, which is something I have been talking about on my channel for a long long time is the dangers of overtraining and my belief that a lot of fighters overtrain and they don't realize they're overtraining and you lose so much energy by overtraining you think you're going to be fitter if you train harder and all this kind of business a lot of the time it can work against you yeah your energy levels can be lower than they should be when you train too much, when you train too hard. Now, when you're talking about fighters from lower weight divisions, they're fighting in, you know, at an artificially low weight because the average middleweight doesn't walk around at 160. In fact, he's not even in the ring at 160. He's in the ring at, you know, 170 plus. So for them, they almost have to overtrain to get themselves down to an artificially low weight. Yeah. So for the lower weights, it's understandable that they have to train like maniacs because of weight reasons. But for heavyweights, there's no reason to be overtraining. No logical reason if you understand the fact that overtraining is a big problem. All right? No logical reason. So what Tyson Fury is saying here, I think is very important for fighters to take heed of. That it's really not about who's the fittest or who punches the hardest or who's the strongest. Because sometimes fighters can get into that mode. They can think about, I'm going to break this personal best. I'm going to break that personal best. I'm going to lift more than this heavyweight over here. Lift more than that fighter over there. Sprint faster. Do you understand what I'm saying? They they start thinking it's a uh, 
triathlon or something. <laughs> you know, they start thinking it's some kind of athletic competition when it's not. It's fighting. If boxing was all about who could run fastest and punch hardest and lift the most and all that type of business, we wouldn't have the, the champions that we have today in boxing. They, they wouldn't be the guys who are at the top if, if you know, who was the best was measured on all those things. We'd have a bunch of other people up there. All right? Boxing is about hitting and not getting hit. Being effective with your punches and effective at not getting punched or not getting punched too much. And this doesn't necessarily correlate with who is the best athlete all the time. You have to have some level of athleticism to be a top level boxer, obviously. But, and, and extremely good athleticism can help you. You look at Roy Jones Jr. But ultimately, it's not the be all and end all. And that's what Tyson Fury is talking about here. And again, the dangers of overtraining. So, yeah, definitely an interesting take by Mr. Fury there. And something people should uh, take heed of. So, let me know how you feel about this in the comment section below. Overtraining. And how good do you think Tyson Fury is going to be going into the Wilder fight? He says he'll be 100%. He says he'll be better going into the Wilder fight. Than he was going into the Klitschko fight. Do you guys believe that? Do you guys think it's hype? Do you guys think that's even possible? Let me know what you think. It's happening. I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.